Gordon. Uh, I'm calling from Moscow, Russia. It's June 16th, 1996. It's about 4 p.m. my time. The reason I'm calling is... Uh, I may be killed today. That's my, my buddy George, living large. When he writes the book, we're gonna look like a couple of chicken shits. How can he write a book if he's fucking dead? You don't know George. George has one of the best minds in politics. Nobody, but nobody knows how to read a poll better than George. George got his start in youth politics during the height of the anti-war movement in 1970. With lots of violence on campus and 18-year-olds first given the right to vote, campaigns were focused on the college students like never before. However, when Time magazine said Jim Buckley had more student activists than any candidate in the nation in either party, they credited this new young organizer, George Gordon. Then, Pete Wilson was elected mayor in San Diego with the youth vote, and George Gordon was selected in 1972 to be the National College Director for President Richard Nixon. Being National College Director for a presidential campaign was the most fun I ever had, but I thought I had reached my Peters principle. You know, the principle that says you rise to your level of competence? I mean, here I'd been two campaigns before, a mayor and a city um, and a U.S. Senate, and I just had a desk in the corner. Now I had two assistants, two secretaries, 38 field people, and an unlimited expense account, and a head that was so big you couldn't get it through the door. We started winning mock elections, and the Attorney General of the United States, who is the uh, head of our campaign, started personally talking about the mock elections that Richard Nixon was winning across the country. And so there was a lot of pressure on me to keep doing it. And uh, we won mock elections in places like Harvard and University of Wisconsin and USC and uh, we got student body leaders from those places and we would constantly par uh, parade them before the press and it was a man bites dog story. You know, it's, it's you don't expect it to happen so it got news. And the more news it got, the bigger head my head got. Then came Watergate. Suddenly my world was turned upside down. I was a friend of the chief of staff, the president, Bob Haldeman and I was close to the president, and uh, uh, he nominated me to be the youngest executive director of any department, department of state since Thomas Jefferson. And I was on top of the world. Then on the day that I had my allegedly pro forma interview with the Secretary of State, boom, I popped in the front page of the Washington Post and stayed there for five days. One good friend I had who uh, stuck by me was Jack Ford, President Ford's son. Jack was uh, the uh, rock and roll kid. He was the one that uh, had uh, the Beatles into the White House and uh, dated Bianca Jagger and uh, appeared on the cover of Rolling Stone. We went to the Lake Placid and uh, to the Winter Olympics, had all the best seats. And uh, we went to Studio 54 for a party with uh, Cheryl Teagues and the Eagles. And um, we just, uh, I used to fly back, spend the night in the White House, and then he and I would take off and go someplace. Soon, Mayor Wilson called, and the two of them, along with their team, began a series of races that created the Pete Wilson era in California. In primaries, the two beat Maureen Reagan and Barry Goldwater Jr., two of the most famous and influential names in the GOP. In the general elections, they beat Dianne Feinstein, Kathleen Brown, Jerry Brown, and Leo McCarthy. So back again as a traveling with a rock star. First there had been Jack, and now there was Arnold. Arnold was always going places in his private jet, and, uh, and uh, when we'd land at the airport, there'd always be 15 or 20 people, or maybe 200, um, to greet him. And uh, that was definitely fun as well. But George just wanted to congratulate you for receiving this very important award here today. Now, you have been an absolute jewel to me, and this is why I'm so excited to say a few words here today, because I remember when I went to you and said, I want to pass an initiative uh, for getting more money for after-school programs. And even during the recession in 2002, 
you managed to put a strategy together to go out and tell me exactly what to say, what not to say, how to answer all the questions fit for the press, how to give the speeches, what to say in the speeches, and the whole strategy you put together that even during the recession in 2002, we won overwhelmingly with 57% of the votes to get $428 million more money into the after-school programs here in California. Everyone said it can't be done, but you made it possible because you had the strategy, you had the know, you had exactly the vision on how to do it. And the same was again when I ran for governor. It was because of your talent, because of your strategy, because of your advice that I've taken on every step of the way, I won the governorship. And then we won 23 other initiatives that we worked on together. You're a genius, I love you, you've become a great friend, and you deserve this award. So hasta la vista, baby. So getting a call from Arnold Schwarzenegger was kind of funny. You know, you don't believe it's really him. It's not, you think it's somebody uh, uh, impersonating him. But he said, he said, well, call me back at Old Productions and um, we'll see that it's me. So I did, and it was. But wait, there's more. Hi, I'm Steve Moore. I'm George's sometimes partner and frequent son. We have yet to cover Panama, Czechoslovakia, Romania, Canada, or even Russia. Now, I spent five months in uh, Moscow with George and three months in Bucharest. A lot of us Republicans talk about our opponents being communists, but really, in Eastern Europe at the time, ours were communists. Yeltsin, when we arrived, was at 6% and fifth place in the first poll we took, while the communists started out around 30%. A great deal of our challenge was to convince the Russians that we knew what we were talking about. Everything from having Yeltsin smile to having Yeltsin appear in his own TV commercials to actually hitting a few of the message points that we developed for him through polling. But by the end of the campaign, we had convinced him through polls, focus groups, and perception analyzers, just like home. You know, as it turns out, the tools work the same everywhere. Russia, as you might imagine, was the crown in George's career. Pete Wilson and, and of course, Bob White were the major influences on my life. Uh, I started with them in 1971 as youth director and uh, ended up running all of his campaigns for statewide office um, for U.S. Senate, governor, and what have you. Um, Pete was the, uh, had the most integrity of any po political person I've ever met. He, um, he was absolutely true to himself on his issues and, uh, and, and expected the rest of us to be that way too. Um, Bob White, of course, was his chief of staff and, and um, a tremendous influence on everyone's life. So the phone rang and this guy with a very heavy Russian accent says, uh, hello, Mr. Gordon, we want to uh, hire you to come to, uh, to um, Moscow right away. If you want to hear the rest, watch the movie. It's a funny movie and it's uh, very accurate and it shows how we do campaigns internationally. What you will recognize is how you do them here too. George! That good night. George! We are political consultants. That's it. We are paid by the client to predict That's polls. Right. That's, That's right. it. We're That's always it. backstage, under the table, in the shadows. You know, we're never going to get elected or impeached or sacked in the end zone. We're not rich enough. We're not thoroughbred enough. We're behind the scenes. We're the making of. Let's face it. Is that it, George? You want to get sacked in the end zone, is that it? Just once, that'd be, you know, beautiful, yeah.